Get in the know. Non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Football. Hello, football and Vikings loving friends. This is Purple Daily. Daily Vikings entertainment. Just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. And for those of you asking, the drama, the cliffhanger of yesterday's episode, yes, Ole Macadac was able to meet his wrestling hero, Shawn Michaels, and also make his flight on time. <laughs> traffic was smooth sailing. You traffic, L.A. traffic fear monger, Judd. 405, wide open. I don't even know. There's a bunch of, there's 405. There was some other one. I don't know. It was wide open. It was smooth sailing. 19 minutes from door to door. Wow. All right. My cab driver was also like probably going 105 miles an hour and weaving in and out of traffic. Yep. So now we get the truth. uh, When I was coming back from Vegas on Sunday on on my epic hangover, I had probably the craziest Uber driver of all time. And when you're queasy (laughs) and not 100% and you're taking corners and just running every yellow light, not a fun place to be as a passenger. (laughs) Up on two wheels going around a turn. Yeah. I, I was once in a cab with a friend where we actually had to have the cabbie in Chicago pull to the side of the road so he could get sick. My Wait, friend, the, my your, your, oh, sick. your friend or the driver got sick? No, your my friend got friend, sick. the driver was very pissed off. And it was in a Chicago tunnel, so there was really no side of the road. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It See, if you would have slowed Times down a different. little bit, you would have saved would have saved that time. But at least you, the guy but you guys probably had to pay for the time your friend was puking out the door. I'm sure, yeah, but at least he puked running. out the door, which it, which beats in the cab, which gets really expensive because they can charge you for a lot of cleanup. <laughs> yep, yep. So, anyways, uh, yeah, this is your uh, daily cab uh, vomiting discussion here, at Purple Daily. Mm-hmm. Presented by our friends at TCL, now an official partner of the NFL. And TCL has award-winning TVs for any budget, any space, all with stunning picture quality. They make more than just TVs, too. They offer mobile products, audio devices, home appliances. TCL brings you joy and simplicity through innovative technology. So, all right, let's, now that we're kind of, you know, we're a week clear of the NFL free agency period opening up, the first wave has kind of subsided, right? Right. And now there's going to be a second and third wave that might crash into the NFL draft. And the Vikings have made a, we'll, we'll go through some of the latest uh, signings that they've made. But one thing seems very apparent to me, bringing back uh, CJ Ham, and then signing the, uh, the Ravens blocking tight end. Is it Josh Oliver, right? Yep. He was the first guy they signed. Yes. It seems to me that the Viking, and then obviously trading for, TJ Hawkinson, too, just one of the best tight ends in the league. It feels to me like the Vikings are set up to to put out different personnel packages this year offensively than last year. Last year was all about 11 personnel, right? The Rams ran more 11 personnel than any team in the league. Vikings are going to come in here, you're going to see, and that's kind of what it was, at least for large chunks. It was 11 personnel, meaning one tight end, one running back, three wide receivers. You get teams like the 49ers who run 12 personnel, 22, where you have more meat and potatoes skill position players out on the field. So I guess offensively, what what do you sort of make? And it's incomplete because they could still go sign. They could go sign like a DJ Chark or they could draft Quentin Johnston or something in the first round. But what do you make offensively of what they've done so far this offseason? I think they've done a good job of trying to get players that Kevin O'Connell can use. And I, I think that this is also a testament to the fact that O'Connell and Quazy had a team that they certainly liked and a team that won, what, 13 games. So I'm not trying to crap on that team. But from a personnel standpoint and from a schematic standpoint, it definitely offensively was not what they what they wanted. Um, in retrospect, I think the trade for that sent, I think, was a fifth round pick to Philadelphia for Jalen Rager was a trade where they thought, OK, this might this guy might fit into a gimmicky type of role here and there. And he really didn't. Um, I, I would expect that now with uh, Brandon Powell from the Rams being signed to return punts that Jalen's days here are probably numbered. I like what they're doing, though. And, in you know, keep in mind, too. So I think we fall too in love because it's sort of the old school thing with the guy with a head coach, offensive head coach's tree, right? Like you're from the Shanahan tree or the McVay guys are descendants of the Shanahan tree. And we look at what they've been doing and we're like, that's it. But it's really not now. It's far more fluid than that. And, you know, 
the Kansas City Chiefs, I, I was watching the game during the course, I think it was late in the regular season, and there was a lot of talk about the that fact that the Chiefs ran a lot of 13 personnel. Mm. And, you know, Kevin O'Connell's a smart dude. He watches film, and mm-hmm. he sees, you know, what Reed, what the Chiefs are doing, Andy Reed is doing, and he thinks to himself, okay, that's interesting. What can I do? And I think in some ways, uh, C.J. Ham coming back, Oliver being signed, Hawkinson being really a hybrid receiver, puts you in a position to, as you said, Phil, go with 22 personnel, which is two guys in the backfield, essentially two tight ends, one receiver, because this is all about, you know, go back to what O'Connell said in his first press conference, the illusion of complexity. How do you develop that? And I will say this. I thought that there was a surprising, and I think O'Connell would agree with this, lack of illusion of complexity from the Vikings offense last season. Yeah. Doesn't this now put you in a position to leave defenses guessing? And the last part, too, is I think that in retrospect, this is more of an indictment of the entire run game than Dalvin Cook. I think what they're saying is we felt we honestly could not run the ball effectively. We have to find ways to do exactly that, if nothing else, so it scares teams. So they can't just yes. say, well, it's going to be a pass to Jefferson. So I think all of these things are actually – Although they might not be deemed sexy signings, I think they're actually building up to what O'Connell wants personnel-wise to put him in a better play-calling position. So yeah, there's a lot to unpack here. A lot to unpack here. Um, I will say, first of all, you brought up the Chiefs, and then I brought I brought up the Niners on yeah. Mackie and Judd today, and we'll dive in here too because it is it is the Shanahan tree, and we 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 kind of correlate with well, it's the McVeigh branch that O'Connell, but O'Connell actually worked for the actual Shanahan tree as well. So there's a lot of things to be taken from that. And then also, like you said, you're just kind of looking at, all right, if the Chiefs are innovating in some way, you can just because you don't come from the Andy Reid coaching tree doesn't mean you can't steal from Andy Reid. And one thing that really stands out to me, just from a personnel standpoint, all right, we're gonna get we're gonna get deep in the weeds here, boys. Football. Come on into the weeds. Come oh, on into the football the- slop. The football slop and weeds. It's the football slop. We're like sorting through the slop. Oh, I like it. <laughs> The Vikings, so Hawkinson came in sort of halfway through, but when you when you add up like the total tight end snaps for the Vikings last year, and uh, this is just I'm just gonna go regular season on this, all right. So if you add up all the Vikings tight end snaps, so Hawkinson plus Johnny Munt plus a little Irv Smith Jr. and it was around like eleven or twelve hundred tight end snap, like twelve hundred tight end snaps for the Vikings. And uh, 170 fullback snaps. So keep that in mind. They had like a let's call it like let's call it like 1,400 total tight end and fullback snaps, including T.J. Hawkinson for like a half a year. Right. The San Francisco 49ers had, I want to say, nearly double that with tight ends and fullbacks. So they had George Kittle. George Kittle had about 900 snaps himself. He was injured a little bit too. Then they had three other tight ends, Tyler Croft, Charlie Warner, and Ross Dwelly combined for like another 600 snaps. So that so just there, Kittle and the, the, the three other tight ends gets you past the Vikings, tight ends and fullback snaps. And then you add Kyle Juszczyk, the, the all-time sort of you know hybrid fullback guy of our generation from Ravens and now 49ers. He can catch passes. He can be a lead blocker on run plays. He can even run the ball. He'll run the ball like 20 times a year. Mm-hmm. And he played five or 600 snaps. Mm-hmm. So the, the 49ers off the, a similar tree were running a ton of fullback, tight end personnel out in addition to their wide receivers. The Chiefs, all right, let's just go regular season. Travis Kelsey was obviously out there you know, as much as anyone. He had uh, almost 1,000 snaps. Noah Gray, their backup tight end, played 600 snaps. They also had Joe Fortson play about 200. He's a backup tight end. They didn't really play a lot of, uh, they didn't really have a fullback that played meaningfully. Michael Burton played 71 snaps. But I guess what I'm saying is there are some, you think about like the high octane offenses, you think wide receivers and running backs, right? But there are some high octane offenses right now that are running tight ends and fullbacks out on the field a lot more than the Vikings are. Yeah. And I wonder if there and it's not that Josh Oliver is going to catch passes or that CJ Ham if he gets another 200 snaps is going to like get the ball. 
It's that those guys are helping with the blocking scheme on running plays. Those guys are are helping on some of the, you know, some of the passing plays that might be rooted in play action, right? It's just it's a it's a different approach and some of these offenses are more explosive than the Vikings who ran out 11 personnel with three wide receivers. So And I got to your weeds deep dive. Well, and and off that point though, um I got to think that the use of Ham is actually um 13 disguised as 22. Oh my god. Because think about this. Oh. Football. Football, yeah. yeah. Football. Yeah. Football. Yeah. Football. Yeah. Football. Yeah. Football. Yeah. And the key is in the disguise, make no mistake. But if you think about it, Ham can split out too as well, right? So like he's not a true I don't think Kevin O'Connell is like traditional meat potatoes fullback. I think what he's seeing is the opportunity at times to motion Ham out. And now you've got your 22 becomes 13. Ham is actually, I think, at the end of the day, m- more of what we called. I don't know if we still call it this, but H back an H back. Yeah, which is mm. what Klein Saucer became. This Klein is Saucer porn. in the opposite way <laughs> became an H back. Yeah. So when and when you have the H back, and now you've got the illusion of complexity, which is what are they going to do? So, so where Ham gives you an advantage over traditional 13 personnel is he's not really a tight end. He's not really a fullback. So he's a diamond in the rough. You don't know. I love this. I, love, I don't know. Well, I guess I'll back up a step and say, I don't know that more CJ Ham on, and by the way, Doogie clarified. So he's under contract for 2023, which we knew. It's a two-year extension into 2025. Doesn't mean that he's going to have to, He's not necessarily going to be on the team in 2025 because a lot of these contracts have sort of dummy years on them. But yep. I don't. I, so on one hand, I'm like, boy, he's almost is he 30? He's like 29, going to be 30 years old. He's been around for a while. He's very underutilized. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me to commit, but they. It's very obvious Kevin O'Connell has some things he wished he would have done differently last year, and maybe he figures, okay. There's some teams having more success putting heavier packages on the field. We've got some guys that can kind of do that. And if we can go add a Josh Oliver and maybe heighten CJ Ham's role, it opens up for some of the skill position players that are actually explosive to be more explosive. So they still, to me, they still need, even if they're not going to run as much, maybe three wide receiver stuff as they did last year, they're still going to run a lot of it. And they don't really have, to me, a great number two receiver yet. Oh, that's uh, because KJ Osborne is a number three. So yes. the only guy available right now in free agency that could maybe check that box is DJ Chark, but there's been no connection or steam at all there, which means the draft. But I don't want the Vikings to go in desperate for a receiver. I don't think they, you know, unless they trade around and get, get some extra picks, I don't want them to be pigeonholed into, well, we have to take a wide receiver in the first round. But it is something that I think they really need for 2023. So we'll see. Yeah. And, just to be clear on the personnel stuff too, I I don't think it's like um, questioning. Do do they need more CJ Ham? Like, is this guy? I think it's the placeholder of of what that person lines up and has to be accounted for. So like, it's not in all of these cases that we're talking about. Like that guy is going to be fantastic because he's going to be used right. It's more of he's going to be a problem, and yeah. the more problems that you create just with with the chess pieces of football the more interesting it becomes. And so I don't think that this is a CJ Ham conversation. I think that this is where they're putting their chips as far as what can we do on, on these certain downs, on these certain plays to create issues because now the defense is slightly confused. But I'm with you on receiver because I, I got this tweet last night um, after it came out that they had signed this Brandon Powell from the Rams. They in no way, shape, or form have their second guy yet. And like he's not gonna not he's not gonna line. factor in much. He might he might get some gadget run. You know, he caught like a couple dozen passes last year. Yes. But he's not gonna be like your number three. Why he's here to be a punt returner, really. And it really like Declan raised this question on our text thread. The signing of Brandon Powell probably raises more questions about did they whiff on the Jalen Rager trade? Yeah. And he's just gonna be gone at some point. Which right? I'm fine with. Yeah. That's fine. But but I mean it was probably worth a chance. It didn't work. Um it, it's it's a draft pick, but I would far prefer to, to see you take some chances with third day draft picks than not. And yeah, I think the question, I think the only question, and th- this again is something we don't know, you guys. 
The only question left about this, as far as like, like what direction are Quasi and O'Connell going here also is like, do they plan on having everything offensively solved for 23 or is this a work in progress still too? Cause I mean, they're definitely in some ways, and this does not mean they're going to be bad just to be very, very clear. I'm not calling mm-hmm. for a tank here, but they're definitely in some ways taking steps back to take steps forward. So like do so Phil, to your point, do they feel this inherent pressure of we've got to find our long-term number two receiver, you know, this spring, or are they saying, let's take some more shots. Let's try and find out might draft a guy might not. It just, it feels like, and I don't know that I said this a lot about the Spielman teams. It feels like they're creating wiggle room to do different things here now where I'm not definitely hung up on their thinking if it's not right by training camp, we're in trouble. Well, the speed there, there is a couple times very, very uh, memorably and specifically where the Spielman front offices would tell you that we don't draft for, for immediate need. We draft best player available. You can get yourself in trouble drafting for immediate need. And then they would go and draft Garrett Bradbury right. in the first round, or they would draft one of like many different cornerbacks. Well, Treadwell. Laquan Treadwell. Yeah. Need us one. Okay, when they drafted the Quan Treadwell, though, didn't they already have Stefan Diggs and Adam Thielen on the team? Yep. Wasn't he like the third guy? Um, so yeah, but Thielen they, like so hadn't they emerged thought... yet. Thielen hadn't emerged. He was a, yeah. still a special teamer because Treadwell was drafted in 2016, but Diggs had a really solid rookie year. So, like, they, they weren't, and I think Mike Wallace, like, got cut right before then, too. So they were thin, technically, at wide receiver, but they were sitting on a gold mine in Diggs and Thielen. They hadn't been unearthed yet. That would be even worse if they thought they were drafting best player available <laughs> and they still whiffed that bad on Laquan Treadwell. Yeah. Yeah, that was not good. Mm. On the running game front, so we're, we're, we're pretty used to the Vikings having throughout the last 15, 20 years, even going back to the 90s, they've like generally had good running games. They've had... You know, running backs, going back to Robert Smith, Robert hell, Smith. Terry Allen into Robert Smith, you yep. know, Michael Bennett for a couple of years. They had a committee there for a couple of years, Adrian Peterson, Dalvin Cook. And in the last 10 years, for sure, their their offensive lines have been a lot better as run blockers than pass protectors. Mm-hmm. So last year was the first time, and I haven't like done the full dive on this, that they had just had a bad running game that, that I can remember in recent history. They were 26th in yards per attempt and 27th in yards per game. So in terms of yards per game, and some of this is skewed because there are teams like the Bears that they led the league in yards per game because they have a quarterback that would rather run for 15 yards than like throw a pass down the field. So some of these, the Ravens were second in yards per game behind the Bears because they have a quarterback that runs for 700 yards. Right. So it can be a little deceiving. But the Vikings averaged 98 yards per game on the ground. The 49ers, who did not have mobile quarterbacks, it was Jimmy Garoppolo, basically, and then uh, Brock Purdy, right? They could move a little bit, but they weren't like Lamar Jackson. The Niners averaged 40 more yards per game on the ground and over a half yard more per attempt. And so, like, when they get a lead, they can just lean into the running game and they can just move you around for, you know, a 12 play drive. Mm-hmm. Uh, or they could hit a home run because they had great run blockers and they had they had tight ends who could block and they had use check, right? So, you know, we talk about can the Vikings be more explosive? Can they can they stretch out and not be playing in these close games all the time? And sometimes the passing game is the first thing that comes to your head. Can they get a deep threat opposite Jefferson? But being able to hit home runs in the running game and what that does to the opponent, just it demoralizes them. It makes them tired. There's a reason why the teams that played the 49ers last year were like winless the first 15 games of the season the week after because they just get mauled for three hours in those games. The Vikings were very finesse last year. Very, very finesse. And I think that's another reason why teams and national media didn't take them seriously. So I kind of like this. Go get Josh Oliver. All right, yep. bring back C.J. Ham and just start punching people in the mouth more often. And San Fran, since Kyle Shanahan basically got there, you, you think about, for as much as we talk about his offensive acumen and passing, you think about how they literally, on a weekly basis, often kick teams' asses. 
Like I go back to, to mm -hmm. the playoff game, the second round playoff game that the Vikings went to. Part of the reason why the Vikings had no chance in that game was they got their butts kicked. Physically, they got their butts kicked. And and yes, there is a just because you can have a passing game that's a threat does not mean that you don't need the run game. And that starts with before talking about trying to win the battle up front, that starts with one thing too: play action. If I don't fear your run game, play action goes away. Like if I am fearful of, okay, these guys are moving the football on the ground, play action, bang, yeah. big play, right? But if I'm like, these guys can't move the football on the ground, am, am I as concerned when Kirk goes to fake that handoff? Absolutely not. Yeah. And, so there's a and, lot of things here. And it's just, you know, like, think about how many times the Vikings had chances to, you know, build a bigger lead in the second half or something, and they just – they would go three and out because they can't really run the football, or they would. They're all their their passing game would disappear for chunks of time too. But this maybe this is a way of okay, let's lean more into the run game. We got a little pass happy there. That's what happened, by the way, after Kirk's first season, 2018. I think he had a career high in pass attempts. It was the first time John D. Filippo and yeah. Mike Zimmer, Mike Zimmer co-signed it. He was the head coach, and they put the whole offense in his hands. And there were some big games. He had like a 400 yard passing game against the Rams or something. But from a team perspective, it just didn't work as well. And then the next year, 2019, they went back to much more of a run-centric. Kirk was more of a compliment. And because of that, he was able to have a pretty big season. They won more games. They went to the playoffs. They won a road playoff game. So it feels like there might be a similar adjustment just with a different scheme here for 2023. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What do we news. got? Kirk San Francisco. The Vikings have lost a free agent. Duke Shelley is signing with the Las Vegas oh, Raiders. The Duke. The Duke. The Duke, the Duke of Shelley. Duke, 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 Devastating Duke, news. Duke, Duke of Shelley. Duke, Duke. Duke. All right, P. Poor one out. Not all right, P. He's still alive. He yeah, is still alive. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck in Vegas, man. All right. Is this a Isn't colossal? Cool? He was legitimately... A really good cornerback. They just kind of plucked off the practice squad of what the Bears. I think this is a testament to to the fact that there are major questions about his ability to play inside. Because at his yeah. stature, he's an inside guy, and he tried there. Well, to why play can't there Why can't you play him outside? He's, I agree with you. By the his way, stature, he, long term, it's going to be yeah, tough. I think that would be a big ask. Um, no, you know what? If the exchange is. In free agency, Duke Shelley to the Raiders, Byron Murphy Jr. to the Vikings. I think I'll take By Byron Murphy. Can I mention one more thing offensively, though, that I think that we have buried? And this is my fault, too. But I think we, it definitely deserves more discussion. What is a full training camp and having TJ Hawkinson completely embedded in the offense going to do? You know, he was fantastic and deserves a ton of credit. Uh, but there's something to the talk of wh when you're traded in season to a team. You don't know the entire like there's a lot to learn there. Mm -hmm. So I do think that the emergence of Hawkinson as a guy who's had a complete offseason and then the entire program to go through. I think that's going to change TJ from being a very effective player and probably take him up a notch or two as far as potential of what he can do within this offense. Well, and that's uh, we don't know what exactly they think of his upside. We know that they, they love the player that they traded for, but if they think, Hey, he was the number eight overall pick at one point, he was thought of as being what Travis Kelsey is now, right? Like he was, you don't draft a tight end in the top 10. If you think he's just going to be a pretty good pass catcher, right? You draft him in the top 10 and the lions weren't the only team that thought that of TJ Hawkinson, you draft him to be a Tony Gonzalez, a Travis Kelsey, George Kittle type weapon. He's not quite there. He's like a B, B plus pass catching tight end. Is there an A minus A level to him? That's he's only like 26 years old, so right. he still has room to grow maybe. And if that's the case, if they believe that, all right, full off season, get him in here. We can do more with him than the Lions were doing. Maybe it lessens the need for that true number two wide receiver. Then maybe all of a sudden, okay, all right, then KJ is your number two wide receiver, but he's really pretty easily your number three target because Jefferson and Hawkinson you know, like the Chiefs haven't had always three awesome receivers. They had, you know, they obviously had Tyree Kill for a while and then Travis Kelsey, but Travis Kelsey is a wide receiver. TJ Hawkinson is kind of a wide receiver. Mm -hmm. So if he can take another, if he doesn't take a step, I would say feels like they need another, another guy in here. 
like pretty desperately. If he can take a step, it be okay. Cool. KJ Osborne can be a then. And if you want to go draft a number two wide receiver, it's gravy. Like ninety eight with Moss, for instance. Um. So, yeah, I think it could be a huge impact on the. Can I go back to the Duke Shelley thing for a second? Because I think Vikings fans are going to be kind of pissed about this. I can already sense like. A little bit like the Kyle Sloter phenomenon from a few years ago where you saw him lighting it up in the preseason. Duke Shelley did it in the regular season. I am okay with this. I don't know what the money is, but I'm with you. Size-wise, he's a slot guy, and he struggled in the slot with Chicago. He's like, what, 25 or 26 years old. There's a reason why he was just available for anyone. He's not a 22-year-old prospect. So I I don't think they're making an epic mistake here, but I do sense that a lot of Vikings fans think that this is a mistake just based on the the Duke Shelley love that I see on Twitter and YouTube, et cetera. What do you have to say to those fans who are like, oh my God, how can they how can they not bring Duke Shelley back? My guess is, and I, I hope without seeing the terms, he got paid something. This team has to make smart salary cap investments, okay? And if you have like like you Duke Shelley, to me, probably, I would hope, got more from Vegas than the Vikings wanted to pay. Like, if he would have come back, because, Phil, we, we talked about this going back to our end-of-the-season free agent breakdowns. If he would come back on their terms, I'd take him back in a heartbeat. But he played really well. He deserves this. That being said, if the exchange again is, okay, Byron Murphy Jr. is getting a pretty good contract here, but the price is going to be if Duke Shelley gets paid, he can't come back. I will take that. I yeah. will take a guy who's established himself inside and outside against a guy who flashed. And look, the sample size on the Duke, I don't think it was enough to pay him much. I agree. It's you still be, a small yeah. sample size. You got to be careful with sort of five and six game samples like that. But it was so. fun while it lasted. Don't yeah. be sad because he's gone. Be happy because it happened with the Duke. In a, a Vikings legend. Okay, Do you Dr. think Duke Seuss. Shelley's a Ring of Honor guy? Are they going to bring him back? I think the name is. I put Duke him in. Shelley. Duke the the Duke of Shelley was one of my favorite things to say. I'm going to miss saying that. I think I, I I think I consider putting him putting him in with all the other Vikings luminaries, the John Randalls, the Allen Pages. Uh, do you guys want to do a little random Viking of the week here? Speaking of Duke Shelley, yeah, a random Viking of the week. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Uh, every week, Judd goes up against either myself or Declan in a battle of Vikings historical wits here. Oh, we'll explain more specifically what's going to happen here. But a shout out to our friends at Athletic Greens, specifically AG1, which so it's been six years since I discovered Athletic Greens products added so much value to my life. I'm a guy that sometimes deals with brain fog in the afternoon, you know. So uh, this con consider this nutritional insurance, okay? One scoop mixed in with your water in the morning or if you want to do it middle of the day, you're covered. 75 high-quality ingredients, important daily nutrients. This is either the first thing I drink, as you can see on the YouTube channel here, in the morning or I would say about half the time I'll, uh, I'll mix it up and do it like around 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon to help combat the, you know, the little uh, energy crashing thing in the afternoon that we all deal with. It helps with my gut health. I feel like I'm dialed in and ready to unleash takes with you guys. So uh, if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash purple daily, athleticgreens.com slash purple daily. And also, Judd's gotten his life in order over the last 18 months when it comes to his uh, weight loss. You can do it as well through Livia. That's right. In fact, what if I was to tell you that by uh, by springtime, by summertime for sure, you could be looking like the guy on the right, not the guy on the, the left, because you looked in the mirror today, and you look like the guy on the left, and you're thinking, Sports Dad, if you can do it, so can I. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can get eight weeks for free right now, the first eight weeks for free. Livia Weight Control Centers. The important thing here is it's not a diet. It's not a fad. They're going to help you very easily, in fact, get that weight off. And then most importantly, they are going to, because their dietitians are so good, they're going to help you keep the weight off. Again, eight weeks for free, 855-GO-LIVIA. Livia, L-I-V-E-A.com, L-I-V-E-A.com. There are plenty of folks in the PD family who can attest because they've joined. They saw if I could do it, they could too. They were right. You can be the latest, Olivia, L-I-V-E-A dot com. Okay, Declan is going to throw out a series of clues. We can uh, shout out answers whenever we want. We get up to three incorrect guesses. 
We can ask Declan questions if we want. He can refuse to answer. Uh, a few of the recent random Vikings of the week here include Ontario Wizenator Smith, Dwayne Rudd, Chris Hovan, Marcus Robinson, Medea Williams, Kelly Holcomb. Judd has a 46 to 29 lead over Declan and I all time. No cheating, no Googling. You can play along at home. Okay. All right, let's do this. This random Viking of the week has logged 76 games in his NFL career. Three playoff games. Of those 76 regular season games, this random Viking of the week has 23 starts to his name. Can I ask, can I ask a question just sure. on the terminology of things right now? Mm -hmm. You're saying has... Are we talking about a player that might no longer be on the Vikings, but is still active in the National Football League? I usually don't like to tip my hand, but that is correct. Yes. What? So, so you're saying this is a former Viking that is currently in the league, still active in the NFL? Wow, Judd, that is nice, nice job. Yeah, yeah, good job, Judd. I thought about the phrasing of how I could do that, no, still get away with it, but it, but um, couldn't do it. So, uh, let's go. Let's go some college facts here. This random Viking of the Week, pretty decorated college player. Uh, he was a first-team All-SEC player. He was a freshman of the year in the SEC. And a third-team All-American his final year in college. Okay. Hold on. Interesting Cut. little fact here, too. He has a passing touchdown and a receiving touchdown on his college resume. Okay, 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 okay. This random Viking of the week, former Raiders GM Mike Mayock said, he's physical, he's tough, and the Vikings got a winner when he was drafted. Always a great I don't, eye of talent, Mike Mayock. But I don't have the list, which I should. I, I do have it, but I don't have it in front of me. I didn't keep it, or it's somewhere buried in my emails. I think we've done this guy before, but I'm just going to, to guess. So if it count, if, if it's wrong, it's just wrong, okay? Yep. Is it Jarek McKinnon? Yep. He's already been done. Yeah, that's what I thought, but I was going to take that chance anyway. I was just going to do it. Both feet. I was thinking about him too, but I, I do have the, the list. Pool. No, I, I and you know what? That's my fault. You you sent me the list. I have not used it, and so that's my fault. This random Viking of the week, including the Vikings, has played for six NFL teams. Let me rephrase that. Actually, excuse me. He has signed with six NFL teams. He has signed with six different NFL teams, including the Vikings. Uh. All right, hold on. You're good. Mike Mayock, huh? Mm hmm Physical tough winner. Physical. Got a winner. It's also before Mike Mayock took that Raiders job. Yep. Nope. This is when he was, I believe, with the Raiders, I think. Oh, this was not NFL Network I, Mike Mayock. Me, um... I thought you were talking about his because he, he used to... Mike, May so. Mike, GM Mike Mayak made that comment about a Vikings draft. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna double check that he was I'm really holding Declan's feet to the fire right now. This is, we're going all in. Apologies, he was still with NFL Network. He had not okay. taken the Raiders job all right, yet. That makes more sense. Okay. The Wikipedia okay. sentence lied Six to me. Weird teams. Wikipedia. I just, I always thought it was a fact. Out of high school, this random Viking of the week was the number one recruit at his position. He was the 30th, 30th best recruit in the country out of high school. Okay. Per scout.com. All right. So he has a receiving and a passing touchdown. Um, okay. It's Irv Smith Jr. Not a former Viking yet. Yeah. I mean, he's a free agent. 
Yeah, true. No, oh, I'm you, just. But, but I, you said. Oh, you said six teams though. He's played. Yeah. For, nah, I forgot about that clue. My bad. Yeah. My bad. This is. This is good, De Dex. Uh, I, okay. I applaud gonna, what you're I'm, doing here. I'm going to guess another one. I'm going right. to guess another one. I applaud what you're doing. Is here. it Rhett Ellison? That's a solid. I don't know. He's been with six teams, dude. I know. But that's a solid guess. Damn it. This that's random a I love that guess. Was yep. playing in the playoffs last year. This just two months ago. See, I, I knew it. He's, so he's played in. I'm just going I'm to I'm just, I'm just talk this out. If Judd gets it, he gets it. So, so I already figured he's, his three playoff games are 2019. He played two probably, and then he played in a playoff game this year with a different team. So he... your logic's not completely true on that. Your, okay. your guess is not completely okay, true. Okay, hold on. So who is in the playoffs? <laughs> no, that's what. I'm okay, saying. then where would his one? But if he would have played in one playoff game. You said he's played in three playoff games. The Vikings played in two in 2019, one this year, but he's a former Viking. So he either missed one of the playoff games in 19 or didn't play for the Vikings in 19 and played in the playoffs in 2015, which means he's been in the league for eight years. He's only played 76 games. Like This is, this is, but he was drafted like around the time Mike Mayock. This is tough. Because the Vikings have only been in the playoffs <laughs> twice since the Bridgewater year, and that was two thousand. And you said fifteen he, into sixteen. So wait, so did did we say he played? He drafted in fifteen. John, what's your crew? Did we say did that he, he not play in the playoffs? He might not have played in the playoffs with the Vikings. I that's what I'm saying. That's what I was going to ask. I, I I haven't heard that clue. He I haven't played heard that clue in at all. the playoffs with the Vikings. Yes. Okay, I hadn't heard that clue. So then. I if my say, logic's off, then he either missed a playoff game in 19 or was on a different team and played in. He was active, but he did not record a statistic. Does that make sense? Okay. For the, for the Vikings in a playoff game? And he did not record a statistic with the playoff team he played for this year either. But he was active. Like. <laughs> okay. So hold on. So all right, we might need some more clues here. So they've been in the playoffs. So this guy would have been in the playoffs either in 15 with the Vikings or in... No, 19. I think, well, well, let me not. You're saying, okay, let me ask. Did he play for the Vikings in 2019? Yes. Okay. Because I was trying to think, because I thought Mayock left a while ago. But okay, so he did play in 19. So that was... So who are the other... Oh my God! Who was there? I mean, is it? No, is it... no, that wouldn't be. I was just, that was, no, not for me. Yep, this random ahead. Viking of the week. Yeah, just keep going. We've already has done that five touchdowns to his name in his NFL career. It's not a receiver. I don't think it's a receiver. It's uh, <laughs> this is embarrassing. Uh, I, there's a couple. No, this I is good. This, I, I think this is legit tough. It's got to be a running back or a tight end. Yeah, it's got to be. What have I already guessed? Irv Smith, Red Ellison. This random Viking of the week. Giving Judd free clues here. Love to run stairs and was mentioned on this podcast earlier. On this episode. He's been mentioned on this episode. Love to run stairs. Laquan Treadwell. There you go. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> that that was well done, Declan. I I got to give you credit. Son that, of a. That that was well done. If it's every yeah, I don't know why it took us that long. That's embarrassing. Well, I mean, there mm. was a. I was no, the, you know trying passing to withhold some off. stuff. I was yeah. thinking running back. No, I mean yeah. highly highly touted SEC guy who yeah. didn't yeah, no. fulfill his potential in the. I'm trying to give physical and tough good. receiver. No, I know, but I, I I it was a good. The fact it was an active player who's barely active. Um, yeah. So he was on the Seahawks practice squad almost all of last. Se Actually, he was on the Patriots. I should have said this. Oh, see, I he was I on the Patriots, this. Cardinals, Seahawks practice squad for the majority yeah. of 2022. He was promoted to the active roster on December 20th. He was active for the Seahawks playoff game. Okay, I had no idea. 
That makes he sense. caught six passes that actually for 22 threw me off. yards this I week. had no I had no idea. Wow. Good for Laquan. Still making a living playing professional football. That was um, well done. If you make a living running a business, Federated Mutual Insurance Company could be a great partner for you. A great navigating guiding hand, much like Pete Carroll is a great guiding hand for Laquan <laughs> Treadwell in Seattle. And both Federated and Pete Carroll have over 100 years of experience in their fields as well. You can find a full list of industries Federated protects and works with, specializes in over at federatedinsurance.com, where it's our business to protect yours. All right, daily Vikings entertainment and uh, off-season news and speculation and random Vikings of the week that just embarrass us like that. Nice job by Declan. We'll see you guys for a Feedback Friday episode of Purple Daily tomorrow.